Okay. Um, Landon, we're getting started. So today we're talking about histograms, which you have seen this type of graph before. I taught it in middle school in sixth grade, in seventh grade, and eighth grade. So I know you've seen it. Do you recognize the word? No. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Histograms. Um, histograms are bar graphs, um, but instead of using like categories for the bars, they use intervals of numbers, and we'll get to what an interval is in a second. Um, each interval width must be the same, and again, we'll practice this in a minute. Always title the graph and label both axes as usual. Um, histograms are often used for larger sets of data and continuous data. So yesterday with the line plot, you would have to write like the whole numbers on the line. Um, but what if you had like a 2.5 or like 2.25? You can't really graph that on a line graph or line plot, so you would use a histogram. Um, describe an interval. It's a span. Whoa, I can't spell. Span of numbers. For example, so let's say you had numbers with a bunch of decimals. Instead of like graphing the individual numbers, you would put everything between 0 and 9 in one column, and then you put everything from 10 to 19 in another column, and it eliminates the issue of all the decimals, 20 to 29, and these are intervals. Right, Anthony? Escriban las notas. I wish I could speak Italian, but I don't know Italian. All I know is manja and andiamo. I don't know what she's talking about. Manja means let's eat in Italian, and andiamo means let's go. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't even hear what you said. Oh. OK. Then. Over here, we're going to set up a histogram with the numbers. Um, before we set up the graph, though, we have to figure out what we have. And what we do for a histogram is create a frequency table first. Frequency table. And for this, we'll have student test scores and the frequency. So this is going to be a tally chart, but instead of like tallying each individual score, we're going to make intervals. When I look at the numbers, the lowest score is a 62. The highest score is 100. So I'm going to make intervals here from 60 to 69 on the test. And then I like this one better. So 60 to 69. And then 70 to 79. 80 to 89, and then 90 to technically 99, but I'm just going to make it to 100. The reason why I did 60 to 69 and not 70 is because if I did it to 70, then 70 would fall in both categories, which I can't have. So here's our chart. And now I'm going to zoom in. Here's what I'm going to do. Zoom out. Oh, I wish I could fit it all in the frame. I can't. No. I zoomed out all the way. I'd have to put this higher. So we can make it a little. Okay, it might be more shaky, but I can kind of fit it. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through each of these numbers and tally it on my frequency table. So 100 would fall in this column, so I mark one there. Then 98 would also fall in that column. 77 and 76, so that's two in this column. Have you done this before? I think I did this in Alex's. Oh, did you? Then 85, one here. 62, 73, 88, 85. Thank you, Grace, for being so calm today. I appreciate it. 72, 66. 70, 90, and 100. Okay, so now we have to put it on the actual graph. 
our title will be just test scores. The intervals always go on the bottom here, so this will be test scores. And then over here, we're going to do number of students. Okay, so number of students, labeling that's easy. I just need to make sure I go up to six students. Just start at zero though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe go one higher. And then the test scores are going to go down here. So right here is going to be they scored from 60 to 69, they'll go there. And then in this bar, it'll be the scores from 70 to 79. And then from 80 to 89 is here. And then 90 to 100. Okay, so this is going to look like a bar graph in my frequency table. I have two students that fell in the 60 to 69 category. So I'm just going to make my bar up to two. Then the 70 to 79 category is five students. Landon, if you're not doing the notes with us, you don't get credit, even if you copy them later. Lessons learned. You t you know you told your mom about it, and then she went to go look at it. No, she looks my. Right, so she just happened to look at it yesterday. Apparently, you told her. No, you're like, don't look at my focus grade, and she's like, why, Grayson? No. I, <laughs> no, I came home and went to my room. I was just on, uh, on the computer. Hmm. So should I put a nice note on there for today uh, to redeem you? Okay, well, I'll put a nice note on there and you can tell it to look, okay? <laughs> and then there was six in the 90 to 100 column, so. And that's the history. Mm. You rotate. Okay, the next page, um, we are actually going to skip this histogram here so you can cross out this one. We're going to do the last one though. Look, my hair is everywhere. So cross this one out. Cross out that one on 241 and then we'll do number two. This one I've definitely seen on standardized testing. It says, determine the set of data where it would be better to use a histogram instead of a dot plot. Select all that apply. So as I mentioned, histograms are better when you have like continuous data with decimals and different things. A dot plot would be better if you're like counting whole numbers. So average daily temperatures for Albany, New York over a year would be better in a histogram um, because there would be so many numbers and it would be decimals and stuff like that too be a lot to look at on a dot plot. Daily temperatures for Albany, New York over a month. Um, that's a smaller set of data, so that would be better on a line plot. And the results of rolling two dice over and over. For that, you would always get a whole number, um, and it would only be from like 1 to 12, so or 2 to 12, so that would be better on a line plot. Then height of high school football players statewide. First of all, statewide, that's a lot of football players, and height is continuous. It can be like fractional amounts and stuff. 
So that would be better on Instagram. Oh, I didn't realize how crooked that was. And then finishing times of 125 randomly selected athletes for a 100 meter race. If you've ever looked at finishing times for a race, it would be like 60.236 seconds and 59.362. Um, so these would be better in a histogram. So anything that's complicated goes in a histogram. Yep. Because you can simplify it with just the bar down. Okay, then beat the test. Okay, create a frequency table and construct a histogram of the data. They didn't give us any room for the frequency table. That's lame. Okay, we'll have to squeeze it in here somehow. Let's see what I did here. Okay, so scores. Use a different pen because that one didn't show up. Scores and number. So last year, the local men's basketball team had a great season. The total points scored by the team for each of the 20 games are listed below. Create a frequency table and construct a histogram of the data. Okay, I need to look at the data here, find like the lowest score. It looks like the lowest score. Oh, it's in order. That's nice of them. The lowest score is 45 and the highest is 89. I'm going to do it in groups of 10 again. So 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69. Oh, I'm running into my graph. 70 to 79 and 80 to 89. And then I'm going to go through the data and just tally it. So there's one, two, three numbers that would fall in the 40s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven that would fall in the 50s. Two that fall here and one that falls here. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now that I have it tallied, I can start setting up the graph. Um, definitely label your graph the title would be points scored at basketball games. Did you know that sports statistics or sports statistician is an actual job? You just use statistics to predict outcomes of games. Or which players would play the best together based on their statistics. You could build teams that way. OK, so to label the axes, this would be points per game down here. And then over here would be number of games. Laura, does this mean number where you're from? Like, is that numero? Like, does that? What's that? Oh, so this does mean number, like numero? Here it's like an abbreviation for number. Like number of games, numero of games. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know. Never mind. It doesn't mean number. Yeah. Or is it like hashtag? Everything's hashtag. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that means it. Okay. That's what it means here too. Okay. Then points per game. Um, we're going to do the intervals down here. There's five intervals this time. Two. So we have 40 to 49. And then number of games, we need to go up to seven at least. That's our highest.
and then I'm going to graph the data. So there's three that fall in this category. Fifty fifty nine is seven here. Then there's seven in this column as well. Then two. And in the 80 to 89 column, there's just one. Um, when you're asked to analyze this type of data or certain questions that might come up, they might say, um, how many games did they score that was 60 points and higher? Um, so for that type of question, you would have to like add up the frequency of the columns. If they asked how many games had points 60 or higher, you would just say 7 plus 2 plus 1, which would be 10 games had a score of 60 or higher. They could also ask what was the least frequent um, score, you would say between 80